Tan Chen Hao over here and today I'll be talking about the Majorana Stellar Representation in Quantum Mechanics. So the Majorana Stellar Representation, denoted by MSR, is basically a technique of decomposing higher spin states into multiple spin half states. So this is, uh, I feel it's a rather niche technique because I'm using it for my research right now and in the references that uh, point to the original um, discovery of this technique, the Majorana um, paper was written in, I believe, Spanish, which was hard to understand. I mean, impossible to understand. So um, that's why I'm, I want to make this video because I think that I want, I have a decent understanding of the MSR and I would like to share this knowledge with you guys. So if you are here for the Majorana Stellar Representation, I hope that by the end of the video, you have a clear understanding of the, the process to calculate, to decompose a spin J eigenstate into multiple spin half eigenstates, or, or rather multiple spin half states. Yeah, okay. So let's refer to this document I have over here. So, so this is... Yeah, yeah, so let the derivation of the Majorana stellar representation. So we, we begin by first discussing the Schringer boson representation for spin J quantum systems. So a spin J Hilbert space is characterized by a basis because a Hilbert space is a vector space. And so it has a basis. And this base this Hilbert space is two J plus one dimensional vector space. And so it has two j plus one basis vectors, or rather basis states. Yeah. And so we are we label them by a uh, number m. J just tells us what spin it is, what kind of spin we are talking about, the spin j system. And m ranges from minus j to j. So it goes from, let's say we have a spin one system, then it, m would go from minus one, zero, one. So it's there's three basis vectors. So a Hilbert space has these basis vectors, these basis states, as well as uh, there's also spin operators that act upon these basis states in the following manner. So we have the raising operator, which raises the basis state by one. Then there's a lowering operator that lowers the basis by one then there's the total spin operator that gives you the j j times j plus one eigen value and then there's the spin in the z component which gives you the m as the eigen value so um yeah so these operators these spin operators allow you to essentially manipulate the basis vectors. Then one can check that these basis vectors, the, I mean sorry, these spin operators obey the SU2 Lie algebra in the following manner. So the raising and lowering operators don't directly behave, uh, don't directly obey SU2 Lie algebra, but if we write them, if we write the spin X component in terms of the raising and lowering operators and the spin y in terms of the raising and lowering operators as well then we can then then the spin of x spin of y and spin of z spin operators would behave would obey the su2 lie algebra commutation relation or the rather the lie bracket now if you want a further elaboration on um, this entire section that i've talked about so far please refer to my previous video because in the previous video, I talked about higher spins in quantum mechanics. So this is just a brief overview of what a spin J Hilbert space equipped with spin operators uh, is like. Okay, so with our understanding of spin J systems right now, let us see if we can find another representation of this spin J quantum system. So it turns out, that we can define two bosonic modes A and B such that when we def such that when we define the raising and lowering operators in 
a clever way, namely raising equals to a dagger b and lowering equals to b dagger a, and spin of z equals to half numbering operator a and minus numbering of the z b. If we define the three uh, spin operators in the following way, and we in, and we impose that these modes are bosonic, meaning they satisfy these bosonic commutation relations, then we can check that they obey the following commutation relations, and we will check that soon in the PowerPoint slides. You see, I have a few slides in which we'll do the working to check that. So once again, I repeat, if we define two bosonic modes that satisfy these commutation relations, bosonic commutation relations, then, uh, and we also define the spin operators as such, then we can check that they obey these commutation relations among themselves. And these three, equation 29 to 31, these three commutation relations is actually precisely equation 25. It's it obeys the S. So these three, uh, these three operators obey the SU2 D algebra as well. So this will require some manipulation to see clearly, but we will also cover that later. So we have managed to uh, in a sense, replicate the SU2 Lie algebra using two bosonic modes. Additionally, we can also def if we define the basis states Jm as the following manner, shown in equation 32, then we can check that uh, equation 32 together with the definitions here for the spin operators in terms of the bosonic modes, we can check that those new definitions also satisfy the same equations 19 to 22. Basically, the, the new raising and lowering operators, the new total spin and spin z operators, these new spin operators, which are defined in terms of the bosonic, the two bosonic modes, they also behave exactly like a spin j system. And that is therefore the Schringer boson representation for spin J states. So all in all, um, we first examined the algebraic structure of spin J quantum systems, which is in essence the spin J Hilbert space, together with the SU2D algebra. Then we we defined um, some operators in terms of bosonic two bosonic modes and we verify and we will verify that these uh, new operators behave in the exact same way as the spin j system in terms of algebraic structure and in turn we say that these two bosonic modes are the stringer boson representation for these spin j systems so now before we move on to the majorana stellar representation, we will verify what we have claimed so far. So let us jump over to the slides. So first of all, uh, okay. So first of all, let us verify that S plus commute, commute with S minus equals to 2SZ. Okay. So if you want to skip ahead into the Majorana stellar representation, please feel free to do so because the next uh, probably 20 minutes is going to be me deriving all the claims we had so far. Okay, so let's see. We first have S plus equals to A dagger B, right? So I'll just write the commutation relations here. So A, A dagger equals to A, A dagger minus A dagger A equals to 1. And also B, B dagger equals to B, B dagger minus b dagger b equals to 1 and a commute with b so we have this s minus equals to um, b dagger a from the definition here so uh, yeah so commutator of s plus and s minus equals to a dagger b b dagger a minus b dagger a a dagger b 
Okay, so we can bring all of these to one side. Um, okay, so A dagger A, B, B dagger minus. I am doing this uh, especially slowly so to make it clear. But I will speed up a bit more later on. A, A dagger. So basically, the A's and the B's commute. So I just brought them together. So you can see that this is A dagger A. And then B, B, B dagger equals to 1 plus B dagger B, right? So this is 1 plus B dagger B. Minus B dagger B, 1 plus A dagger A. And so if we equate this, then we multiply it out. We realize that the A dagger A, B dagger B cancels with the B dagger B, A dagger A. So this term cancels. So in the end, we get a dagger a minus b dagger b, which is precisely 2 s of z, because s of z is half of the numbering operator here minus the numbering operator there. Yeah. So we have verified this equation. Now for the next one, s of z reminder is half a dagger a minus b dagger b and s plus equals to a dagger b so let's evaluate this sz s plus equals to half um, a dagger a minus b dagger b times a dagger b minus half a dagger B, A dagger A, minus B dagger B, equals to, mm, okay, so this is half, um, A dagger B, A, A dagger, okay, half of the whole thing, so, minus, um, minus, minus, um, this will be B dagger B A dagger B minus um, um, A dagger B A dagger A plus A plus um, B dagger B sorry plus Ah, okay, plus A dagger B, wait, now this one times this one, right? That's A dagger B, B dagger B. Okay, so now let's do something. Um, we can group this term and this term together. And then we realize that this one minus this one is equals to 1 because the commutator of A and A dagger equals to 1 so we get half A dagger B minus mm, minus so this one is uh, there's a B dagger B minus Okay, so minus A dagger B minus B dagger B minus B dagger B. Eh? Sorry, um, hmm. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, let, I'm so sorry for this. Let me just rewrite, let me just rewrite this term. Let me just rewrite this term as A dagger b dagger b b yeah because i want the i want the middle two terms so you can see the middle two terms here they are quite nice so it's a dagger mm, b dagger b minus b b dagger b 
and the center here is minus 1. So it will be half a dagger b plus a dagger b equals to a dagger b, which is precisely s plus. Okay, then for the s minus, we have so s z equals to half a dagger a minus b dagger b s minus equals to b dagger a okay so s z s minus commutator equals to half a dagger a minus b dagger b b dagger a minus half b dagger a a dagger a minus b dagger b equals to half B dagger A dagger A A minus B dagger A sorry uh, yeah B dagger A B B dagger minus um, B dagger A A dagger B A plus um b dagger a b dagger b equals to so we can group it once again we group this one with um we group this one with this one so we realize it's commutator here so a dagger a minus a a dagger equals to minus 1, right? So this is half B dagger A times minus 1. And then we minus the other one. So uh, so this one and this one, we realize that this term is common. So the other is minus commutator, so it's B dagger A. And that gives you uh, minus B dagger A which is minus s minus. So we have once again verified this. Okay, so let so so far, just a quick check. We have we by by the three definitions over here, 26 to 28, equations 26 to 28, by the three definitions here of the spin operators in terms of the bosonic modes, we have uh, verified the commutation relations as such. So how do you go from these commutation relations to the SU2 Lie algebra commutation relations? So basically, how do you go from the X, Y, and Z spin operators to the raising, lowering, and Z spin operators? So to do so, there's a definition which is as um there's a definition which basically states that spin plus equals to sx plus i s y and spin minus equals to s x minus i s y so if we have these on the left and we want to go to the right let's see how we can do so so first of all uh, we verify the first one which is s plus and s minus that equals to um, so that equals to plug in the definitions. So the the commutators of x and itself, if you commute with yourself, then it just vanishes. So we only need to worry about the non the ones where you don't commute with yourself. And this is in turn equals to uh, this is equals to i s z and then this is equals to minus i s z so you can see that this they will add up to 2 s z so we have verified the first one then for s z with s plus equals to s z with s x plus i s y equals to z with x is i s y 
and z with s with y is uh is plus i z with y is minus i s x so that will give us um, s x plus i s y which is equals to s plus so we have verified the second one now for the third one s x minus i s y equals to s with uh, z with x is once again i s y and then we minus an i and z with y is minus i s x so that will give us minus s x plus i s y which is equal to minus s minus so we have verified that. So we have verified that the left goes to the right. So let's verify that the right goes to the left as well, which shouldn't be too hard because we're simply inverting the relations. So what is it like is simply um, Okay, my pen isn't working. Okay, great. So S X equals to half S plus plus s minus s y equals to 1 over 2 i s plus minus s minus so we just plug it in so s x s y equals to 1 over 4 i s plus plus s minus s plus minus s minus because 1 over 4i uh, minus s plus s minus plus s minus s plus equals to 1 over 4i Uh, this gives us 2SZ so minus 2SZ and then the other one gives us minus 2SZ as well so you can see that this is equals to minus 1 over I SZ which is equals to I SZ so we have verified this now the other two should not be too hard I'll just go through it for the sake of going through it S Y and S Z, that would be um, one over two I S plus minus S minus S Z equals to one over two I S plus with S Z gives us minus S plus and minus uh, so the s minus with s z gives us minus s minus but with there's a negation there's a negative sign there so this should give us plus s minus okay hmm uh something is a bit weird s y with s z think hold on uh, minus s i minus s minus with s z oh sorry this should be a minus sign and then that makes a lot of sense because it's uh, so there'll be minus 1 over i which is i s x Yep, so we have verified this one. Now S Z S X is simply mm, one over two S Z with 
s plus plus s minus equals to 1 over 2 s plus minus s minus which is just Am I missing a minus sign again? Um, no, 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 yeah, I'm not, which is just i as y. Yeah, that's correct, because the i's cancel. So, done. So what I've shown so far is basically that there are two sets of commutation relations here. They can go interchangeably. So they go from one to another. So we have three here, then we have three there. They can swap around with the, their equivalent, basically. So I've now shown, I've now shown that the equation 29 to 31 is exactly equation 25 after some manipulation. Okay, now for to show that the basis states defined as such would obey the same uh, will obey the same raising and lowering and uh, in a w w now to show that sorry now to show that this, the basis states we define it in terms of these bosonic modes it will obey the same relations with the raising and lowering operators as well as the total spin and the z component we shall do a bit more working so first of all to show that the raising is satisfied we need to write down the definition so s plus j m equals to a dagger b and then we write down the definition of the basis states so this a dagger j plus m b dagger j minus m over j plus m j minus m So now, uh, first thing we notice is that the B can commute with all the A's to go to the front. So that simply leaves us with A, J plus M plus 1 over J plus M factorial. And then the second part is just B with a bunch of B daggers. Now, when we have this whole string of B's and B daggers, let's see what we can do with it. So the first one we can do is to commute the first two. So we remember that B, B dagger minus B dagger B equals to 1, right? So, so this in turn equals to 1 plus B dagger B, B, B dagger sorry, uh, B dagger, B dagger, so on, B dagger. And if we keep track of the number of B daggers, at first there's J minus M of them. So now there'll be B minus, sorry, now there'll be J minus M minus 1. So, um, so there'll be, yeah, so that's that. So B minus J minus 1. So if I expand this out, okay, there's a mosquito flying around me, which is really annoying. Okay, so there's B, J minus M minus 1. And then, plus, we have B dagger, B, B dagger, B dagger, so on, B dagger. And there's J minus M minus 1 of these. All acting upon this state. So now we do the same thing here. We do the same thing here, and then we get B dagger J minus 1, M minus 1. We, we multiply it out, we realize that this is times 2 now. And then the B has now slid along, it's now gone one more. It's sort of like going down the chain of B daggers, and each one that it goes down, it, 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 it throws out the, this term. So now, remember that this is the B, 
is the special one that's going down and this entire chain that is j minus m minus 2 now so this continues until you get b until you you get uh, that there's all of this basically vanish until you get that is zero minus one so how many of that is that so that would be j minus m of them so you get j minus m plus b to the power of mm, j minus m b of this thing and of course b applied to the ground state you annihilate it this thing will just become zero and then the rest would remain so what remains is this so we can write this here uh, we get a dagger j plus m plus 1 over okay I'll just write the bottom as j plus m plus 1 factorial then at the top I'll, multi I'll multiply it by j plus m plus 1 okay then I have um, b dagger to the power of j minus m minus 1 and then times j minus m and at the bottom I have j minus m factorial acting upon the ground states okay so j this this term and this term it'll, it'll cancel a little bit so we get a j now it's time to put some brackets around my terms to make them start to be more apparent j plus m plus 1 j plus minus m plus 1 and then we get square root j plus m plus 1 square root j minus m and this in turn is the same thing is essentially uh, j m plus 1 but with this prefactor which is now j square minus m square plus j minus m which is in turn j j plus 1 minus m m plus 1 and we are done so we have verified this equation yay so yeah so the raising operator acts upon in that way. So the uh, same thing for the lowering operator. Oops, there sh there's a typo here. So it shouldn't be a plus, it should be a minus. Okay, but the, the minus x exactly in the same way. It, as in, it's, ju it's just s minus is just b dagger a. So instead of eating up the b's it eats up the a's so yeah I, honestly i don't think it's there's a point going through this because i've already gone through the tedious steps here so this is just the same thing now for s squared okay s squared um uh you need to first express currently okay so because currently we don't have a we don't have we, we first need to express s squared in terms of a and B's and, and the daggers. So to do so, remember that S squared equals to Sx squared plus Sy squared plus Sz squared. Okay. Um, yeah, okay, actually that will mean that we should do Sz first. Yeah, we should do Sz first. So uh, yeah, let's do Sz first then. Sorry. So to do Sz first, we remember that Sz equals to half the number operator for A minus the number operator for B, right? So if we act Sz upon uh, A dagger J plus M over this thing and B dagger J minus M over J minus M 
in a ground state then um this because the a and a a the numbering operator for a simply counts the number of bosons there are so this would give out a j plus m and then the b would give out a uh, would give out the number of boson b bosons so that would be j minus m and if it's much like this do is not hard to see that is simply m so we have verified this equation okay so okay now for the s squared once again okay so uh, sx in terms of sx equals to this and sy equals to 1 over 2 i right so sx squared equals to 1 over 4 s plus squared uh, s plus squared plus s plus s minus plus s minus s plus plus s minus squared and fy squared equals to minus 1 over 4 s plus squared plus sorry minus s plus s minus minus s minus s plus plus s minus squared so we add these two together we realize that uh, this one and this one cancels this one and this one cancels so as a result we get 1 over 4 um, we, we get we get 1 over 2 s plus s minus plus s minus s plus yeah so that's what we get uh, yes and so um, yeah and so so this is a plus b b plus a plus b plus a uh, sorry b dagger a a dagger b plus s z squared and this is simply uh, a's and b's commute so this is the numbering operator for a and then the b is just one plus the numbering operator for b plus the numbering operator for b sorry the numbering operator doesn't have a dagger so sorry once again n a equals to a dagger a and n b equals to b dagger b and remember that a a dagger minus a dagger a equal to one and b b dagger minus b dagger b equal to one so yeah yeah so okay b uh, numbering of the for b one plus n a is that right yes plus s z squared now when s squared x upon j m then we simply get uh, 1 over 2 n a n b so n a n b or rather 2 n a n b okay i'll just write it as n a n b okay multiply it out plus half n a plus half n b plus s z squared acting upon not, not the ground state j acting upon j m and so this put brackets now this would give us j plus m j minus m plus half j plus m plus half j minus m plus m squared j m and that would give us j squared minus m squared but m squared cancels with that plus uh, j and that of, of course j j plus 1 j m 
So we have verified this equation finally. Yay. So okay. So now that I have gone through the tedious process of explaining uh of deriving each of the um steps here that I have I made some claims here and now I've the, I've proven to you that those claims are in fact uh proven and verifiable. Let's move on to the Majorana stellar representation finally. So we we have seen that the basis states can be represented as the two bosonic modes, right? Acting upon some ground state. So um if we if we have a general spin J state, then we can write it in terms of the basis states with coefficients Cm. And they range from minus J to J. So M labels the spin and Cm labels is the coefficient of that basis state. So uh, each of these basis states can be repre represented in the Stringer boson representation as such. And and you realize that the A daggers and B daggers here can be factorized into a bunch of these factors with Zi's. I'll call these Zi's roots and you'll see why later. So it can be factorized, a general spin J state can be factorized as a bunch of bosonic creation operators with some roots Zi. So we, if we, so we want to find the value of these roots that satisfy uh, equation 34. So let's expand it out. We get aj to the power of 2, a, a dagger to the power of 2j, a dagger 2j minus 1, b dagger, and then the sum of the roots. Then we get the powers of 2j minus 2 and 2, and then the, the sum of the double products of the roots. And this continues until eventually we just get the product of all the roots. So now to find, uh, so now we want to find, so now we can compare coefficients of equation 36 and 34, right? Because they are after all equal, we want them to be equal, so we need to compare coefficients. So for m equals to j minus 1, which is this term over here, this second term, we get that the sum of the roots times this factor equals to cj minus 1 over 2j minus 1 factorial and so on for the rest so basically we get uh, basically we originally have our quantum spin j state which is expressed as coefficients times the basis states so we know all the coefficients cm already we just need to use cm to find the values of the roots zi so right now we have a, we have a bunch of equations we have 2j minus 1 equations um, represent uh, expressing the roots zi and the sums and the products of the roots zi in terms of all the coefficients so basically this is a massive e equation a massive system of equations involving the sums and then the products the double products and the triple products all the way until it's the product of all of them we have these equations that we need to solve for z i for the roots because all the other cj's all the other cm's the coefficients are already known so how do we do that well we make a clever observation that if um remember previously i mentioned the word roots right if we construct a polynomial equation with with z i's with the roots as the roots <laughs> then we expand it out and we sort of get this Vieta's theorem thing remember that the sum of roots is, is a minus the sum of roots equals to like the second coefficient or something so if we, if we expand out the polynomial if we expand out the polynomial with the zi's as the roots then we get equation 43 and we compare and we substitute uh, equations 37 to 41 basically all of the, the sums the, the double sums the triple sums all the way to the product of everything in terms of all the coefficients we substitute all these into this polynomial equation we will yield uh, we'll get a polynomial equation 
um, in terms of all the coefficients. So essentially, in order to find the values of the roots, in order to find the values of zi's that satisfy equation 34 and 35, basically satisfy this expansion, in order to find the values of zi that allow us to factorize the bosonic modes, we need to solve this polynomial equation. So this is easy to do because a polynomial equation can be solved numerically in let's say Mathematica and that will give us numerical values of the roots and then the roots then we can now finally factorize our bosonic modes as uh, as as roots so it turns out that each of these roots that I uh, would then be stereograph so we get a bunch of roots right so it's, for example in in this case we get uh, we get two in in the case of three band models uh, okay three band models is basically a spin one system we get this quadratic equation which gives us two roots so it gives us this and gives us this and then the two roots we do we perform a stereographic projection um we should we perform a stereographic projection of the complex plane let me just write it out so theory graphic projection from a complex plane to s2 and as a result we get uh we get two points on uh we get we get two points on the sphere uh and actually they are entangled also but that's uh, that's that's a side note so we get two points on the sphere so what we have done is we have turned a spin one system into two times spin halves because because each point on the sphere is a is is the block sphere representation of a spin half state uh yeah so all in all the majorana stellar representation allows us to represent higher spin states like spin one as multiple copies of spin half systems and why do we want to do that well in the case in the context of my research spin half uh spin half has the block sphere representation right which is a very nice geomet geometrical picture for stuff like Berry curvature because Berry curvature can be interpreted as the differential solid angle of um, the differential solid angle of the stars of the Majorana stars so uh, yeah but all in all um, higher spin states are difficult to visualize but spin half states are easy to visualize on the block sphere on the block sphere so that is essentially uh, the power of Majorana stellar representation so I hope that you have taken away some understanding of the Majorana stellar representation if you have please leave a like and, uh, and, and comment because comments really mean a lot to me so that's all I have for today. Have a nice day. Bye.